Hi everybody, my name is Jason Williams. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about the MVVM pattern and how we can make our view models talk to each other. Typically when you have a view model that has some data that it needs to share with another view model, what you might do is you might set up some kind of property that the other view model can have set and that's fine. However, what that does is it creates a dependency between your view models. Your view models end up having to know about each other and that's not typically a good design. What you don't want to do is have the data shared directly between view models. So what should we do instead? The solution to that problem is called a messenger. And a messenger is basically just an implementation of the observer pattern, if you're familiar with that. So the observer pattern uh, would be pretty simple to implement in this case. We're gonna create the messenger so it has a subscribe and unsubscribe and a send. And that send is gonna take the data from one view model and share it out with all of the other view models that are subscribed to that message type. And so the view models there on the ends are going to subscribe and say, hey, I'm interested in this data. And then what's gonna happen is that the view model that has the data is going to send that data into the messenger. So once the messenger has received the data, it's going to notify all of the subscribers of that data that there is new data and it's going to send it on to them. So let's go take a look at how we might turn that idea into code. So we have our sample application here. It's a WPF application. It's using the MVVM pattern. And it has a couple of items on the front screen here. We have an online status. Uh, right now it says you are online. And then there's this uh, order count that is uh, presumably being updated by some sort of order service or something to that effect. And then we can click on the settings button up in the toolbar and we can change our online status. So we can, uh, we should be able to say, I wanna work offline. So I would uncheck that box. You can see that it has, is taking no effect, right? And so the settings view model, which is in charge of this little tool window here, is not communicating back to the main window. And so we want to fix that problem with our messenger. Let's go take a look at some of the code. Our main view model looks like this. It has our online status, which was in the lower left portion. And then it has the order count, which was in the lower right portion. And then we have an open settings command, which was in charge of opening that settings dialog. And then uh, one other little oddity is that we do have this uh, order checker service. That's basically just in charge of creating an order count that we can display. Uh, we're sort of using that to simulate some sort of service call or something like that. So the settings window is also very simple. Uh, its view model just has this is online property. Uh, it's loaded from the uh, property settings. So when the checkbox is clicked, this property will become uh, changed. And then uh, on that change, we're uh, setting the value back to the settings class and we're saving all of the settings uh, back to the config file in essence is where it's gonna go. So what we could do, like I said before, is that we could have main view model have a dependency on the settings view model. So we could come in here and we could say, well, we're gonna pass in the settings view model. That could be done. Uh, it's not necessarily a good design because of the dependency it creates between those two view models. So let's create a messenger instead. I should preface this by saying there are libraries that have messengers in them already. Absolutely nothing wrong with using those. However, if you didn't want to use a library, you didn't want to take an external dependency, then it's simple enough to build your own messenger. So I've created a couple of unit tests, prefabbed them, that we'll use to create our messenger. And so the very first unit test uh, is testing the send method. It uh, is ensuring that the uh, messenger notifies all subs or notifies a subscriber when there is a single subscriber. And so this is probably the simplest test we could make for this. So let's go ahead and create the uh, messenger uh, service. So let me create messenger CS here. And we can see that it's uh, going to need a send method on it and it's gonna need a subscribe method. And so the subscribe method uh, needs to know what type of message 
uh, you're subscribing to. It needs to know who you are, and it needs to know what method to call when the message is received. The send method just takes the message, and then, like I said before, it forwards it to the subscribers. So we've got two methods that we need to make this uh, test actually compile. So we're going to need a uh, public void send, and this is going to be is going to take a uh, actually we're going to make this a generic method, and this is going to be an object message. Okay. So now we have our send, and then, oh, actually, this is going to need to be T message. I forgot about that. All right. And then uh, we're going to need a subscribe method as well. So subscribe is also going to be a generic method. Subscribe, and that's going to be our message type there. We're going to need to know uh, who the subscriber is, and we're going to need to know what method uh, they that subscriber wants called whenever it receives the message okay and so that should make these tests compile so let's go ahead and get our test runner running here so this is a non non passing test we need to make this test pass so the subscriber is notified when a message is sent in when the subscriber subscribes, we're going to need to store that uh, subscriber. In fact, we're probably just going to need to store a um, uh, subscriber in some sort of private field. So let's try doing that. So we've got an object. We'll call it subscriber. And we've got an action. We'll call it action. And then down here, we're going to say uh, subscriber equals subscriber and action equals action. And so that's how subscribe would work. And then when the message is passed in, we're just gonna say action message, just like that, okay? And now our test passes, perfect. So let's go ahead and go take a look at our next test. So, uh, send does not notify subscriber when subscriber unsubscribes. So now we're introducing the unsubscribe method. That's a new method. And so let's go ahead and create that. Actually, it'd probably be easiest just to do this here. And then we can come in here and we can change a couple things. This will be a T message. And this will be our subscriber. And then let's see, what should we do? Uh, to unsubscribe, we could just set the subscriber and the action to null. So let's try that. So subscriber equals null and action equals null like that. And now we've got, let's see, what's the problem with the test now? No reference exception. Well, that makes sense. We're trying to uh, send something to a null action. So we probably should have some kind of uh, check in here that says if subscriber equals null, then we're going to return. Okay, so perfect got two passing tests. We're well on our way to having a messenger here. So let's go ahead and go to the next test here. So send notifies all subscribers when more than one subscriber. So this is a case where uh, we're going to have multiple subscribers to the same message. This is not passing because right now we only have a single uh, subscriber, right? So we want to be able to support multiple subscribers to a message. Let's think about how we're going to do that. We're probably going to need some kind of uh, collection of subscribers. And that also means we're probably going to need some kind of subscriber data object. So let's create ourselves a record. Uh, let's do a uh, subscription is what we'll call it. And we'll have uh, the subscriber and we'll have an action. Perfect. Okay. And so if we have that, then we're going to need a list of these. And so we're probably going to want a list of our subscribers 
or subscriptions, I should say, uh, and we'll call it subscriptions equals new. Okay, and then we're not going to need these anymore, right? Because that's going to be in there in that list. Uh, here, when a uh, subscriber subscribes, we're going to have to create a new object. So we're going to say subscriptions add uh, new subscription. And this is going to be the subscriber and the action go in there. Okay, so now we've got a subscription. And then we've got the idea of in send, we're going to need to loop through all of those. And so let's do a for each uh, subscription and subscriptions. And then we're going to say uh, subscription dot action. Nope. We're going to say my uh, IntelliSense is getting me in trouble there. Action message. Perfect. All right. And then uh, let's see, did we need our null check there? Let me think about that. Uh, we'll find out if the test doesn't pass, right? And so then to unsubscribe, we're going to have to find our existing subscription. Uh, subscription is subscriptions. Uh, first of default where the subscriber is the subscriber and then we're gonna say if that's not null I like that then remove perfect okay all right all of our tests pass good deal moving along so our next test Send notifies only subscribers of a specified type when more than one subscriber and type are used. And so now this test is introducing more than one message type. We have message one, or we have message and message two, and then we've got multiple subscribers on top of it. So we're getting a little more complex here. And so that is not passing because uh, one subscriber shouldn't be subscribed to another subscriber's message type. So we're going to need to store this message type along with the subscription. And so it probably would be, that sounds a little bit like a dictionary to me. So we're going to say dictionary and we're going to have the, let's make the message an object. And then each one of those message types is going to have this list of subscribers. We're going to need, so in subscribe, this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have to double check to make sure that the message type is in the dictionary first. So we're going to say if the uh, subscriptions, uh, if it doesn't contain the key of, uh, actually, this is going to need to be a type, not an object. That's going to need to be the type. And then we're going to say subscriptions add and then type of T message, and then a new uh, list of subscriptions. Okay. Okay. And then here we're going to say subscriptions. We're going to grab type of T message like that, and then add that to the list. Perfect. And then in send, uh, actually, let's do unsubscribe next. So we're going to go and look for the subscriptions for this type. So uh, the type of T message. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. Type of T message. Like that. Okay. So then here in our for each, we're only going to want the subscriptions for the message type that we're looking for. So we're going to want to say type of T message here. That way we only get subscribers for this specific message type. Once that's done, now we've got a regression error. None of our tests are passing. So let's take a look and see why that is. So if we go look at, and so subscribe is not working. So if it does not contain the key, there we go. That's part of the problem. There we go. Okay. So if it does not contain the key, then go ahead and add a new list into the dictionary and then add our subscription to that list. Now let's go on to our next 
test. And this one's relatively small. The send should throw an exception if the message is null. And so that is not throwing an exception right now, but that's what we do want it to do. If we pass null in, we want it to throw an exception. So let's go ahead and go back here. And we're gonna do a check and say, if message is null, then throw new argument null exception. And we'll do a name of here to be a little more clean. Okay, and that makes that test pass, perfect. So we'll go to the next one. And send should not throw when no subscribers for the message exists. So if we send a message, but there's no subscribers, we should not throw an exception. But right now, by default, what it's doing uh, is it is throwing a uh, key not found. So uh, we need to make sure that the message type is in the dictionary, right? And so uh, if the subscriptions, don't forget, are not there, uh, contains key type of T message, then we're just gonna return in that particular case, okay? And ooh, it doesn't like something missing one of those. There we go. All right, perfect. So that's that one's passing. Let's go ahead and pull this one in here. Unsubscribe does not throw when no subscriptions for the message type exist. So right now what it is doing is if we try and unsubscribe before we've ever subscribed, it's basically throwing a, a null reference exception. So, um, or not null reference, but the key's not found in the dictionary. So uh, same kind of deal in unsubscribe, we need to check, we need to say um, if the uh, subscriptions contains, and I'm forgetting my not here today. So if it does not contain T message, then we're gonna go ahead and just return. Okay, perfect. That one's working. Now this one gets a little more complex, but if you think about it, <clears throat> our messenger uh, subscribe uh, causes action to be called when send happens before subscription. So if something sends a message before there are any subscribers because a subscriber is late to the game and it subscribes after the me message is sent, we still want that subscriber to get the latest state, right? So um, let's go ahead and make that happen as well. To make that happen, we're gonna need to keep track of the state for the different types of messages. And so we're probably gonna need another dictionary and this is gonna to need to be a type and then we'll do an object here. And let's create, let's just call this uh, current state. Uh, come on. And so once that's in there, now we can start using it. So when we send a message, that's where we're getting our current state. And so uh, what we're gonna to wanna to do is update the current state. So let's go ahead and say, if current state does not contain that, then current state, let's see, is there a better way to do that? Um, actually, it just dawned on me, we probably should be using something that's a little more uh, thread safe. Dictionary is not necessarily thread safe. So let's go ahead and change this to a, uh, not a synchronized collection, a uh, concurrent dictionary like that. Okay, and then we're gonna say uh, current state add or update and it's gonna be type of message. And there we go, okay. So we're gonna add or update, and then let's change this to a concurrent dictionary as well, uh, just to be a little more thread safe. And probably should change this to a 
uh, synchronized collection just to be thread safe there as well. All right, so now we're saving our current state. And then when somebody subscribes, this is going to need to be triad. There we go. And then we want a concurrent collection. Synchronized collection. Uh, so now when they subscribe, uh, what we should do is say, if there is state, then go ahead and send it on to the subscriber, right? So once we're subscribed, then we should say, uh, if the uh, current state contains the key uh, type of T message, then we're going to say, I guess I don't like that quite as well. Let's do a uh, new subscriber is this here. And then we're going to go ahead and add our new subscriber here. And then we're going to use our subscriber, uh, new subscriber action. And then we're going to take our current state like that. Then when we unsubscribe, that should remain relatively the same. All right, so what is it having a problem with now? Okay, so something we did earlier is coming back to bite us. Uh, we don't want to just return here if there's no subscriptions for that message type. We want to actually add uh, that message type in. And so uh, we've got something similar down here. So we'll just for now copy this till we can refactor. And we're going to go ahead and do that. Now our test should pass. Okay, so now our current state is being passed no matter if we subscribe first or last. Uh, or before the send or after the send. Okay, so now we have our messenger. So let's move on to actually implementing it in our application. The way we would do that, uh, let me create an interface for it because I want to use it in our dependency injection uh, framework that we're using. So let's extract an interface here and we're going to need all three of those. Perfect. iMessenger. Yep, 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 yep. That's good. Okay. So now we have an interface. Uh, if we go over to our app CS, uh, we can see where we're adding our dependency injection uh, or setting up our dependency injection framework. Uh, here, I want to go ahead and say uh, add singleton I messenger messenger like that. Okay, now we can inject that into any of the view models that we want. Um, so if we go over here to our main view model, we're going to inject it in here like this. We're going to say I messenger messenger, and then we'll just create a, a private field, read only field for that. And then we want to subscribe. So messenger subscribe uh, to uh, now we need a message type, right? So if we go create a message, so the message we're trying to capture is uh, when the settings change. So when the uh, is online changes. So let's go ahead and add, I'm going to add a new folder. We'll call it messages. And then I'm going to create uh, uh, online status changed message. Okay, and then let's just use a record just because it's convenient. Uh, online status changed message. And then bool is online. Now we can use that message here. We can say online status changed message. And we'll pull in the using here. And we're going to subscribe as this. And then we're going to say uh, online status changed. Okay, so we'll go ahead and generate that. So when the online status changes, um, we're going to cast back to our message here. So uh, message equals online status change message, perfect. And then we're going to 
set online status is the method that we had before. So we're going to call set online status to our message dot is online. Okay. So now whenever that a message is received, it's going to call this method, which sets our online status. And then it also stops or starts our order checker as well. Now uh, we need our settings view model to actually create that message for us. And so our settings view model, we're going to inject the iMessenger here as well. And just put that into a read only field. Perfect. And then once that's done, we're going to uh, down here after we've saved back to the config file. I think we'll do it here. We'll say messenger send and we'll say new online status changed message and import that namespace and we're going to say is online here and that's going to be the value that we pass along with the message. Okay. So now let's go take a look at how our app is functioning. So we are online and the order count is increasing. And now if we go to settings, we can change this. There we go. So you are offline now. If we check it back on, you are online. So now what happened was a previous load of the application had, I had unchecked this that got saved to the config file and it got brought up uh, in a state where the settings didn't actually match what the main window was telling us. But once they got synchronized there, you can tell every time I uncheck that, it says offline. I check that and it says online and then our order count goes up when we're online and our order count stops when we're offline. So, so let's fix that little bug that we just discovered um, where we can save it with a state that's different than what it'll come up as. So let's go ahead and close this and then let's go here and we can tell our app to uh, set up settings. Let's do that. And then we're going to grab our messenger from our ILC container. And <laughs> perfect, almost perfect. So there. And then we're going to say messenger. Uh, send and we really only have one message right now so we're going to say online status changed message and we're going to say the uh, properties settings nope let's see settings and pull that in and then default work online like that okay and so this is going to be a case where we're going to be sending the message, even though there may may not be a subscriber. And so that's why we had that test case in there so that when the subscriber subscribes, it's going to get the current state and it's going to be able to change its state uh, accordingly. So let's go ahead and test that out again. We'll bring up the app. So it says you're currently online and the setting is offline. So let's go take a look at the uh, main view model here. You can see set online status to true is called. Let's get rid of that. We don't need to do that anymore. And we'll pull this up. And it says you are offline right now. So let's go ahead and check the settings. Indeed, we are offline. If we check this, now we are online and the order count goes up and we can uncheck it to go back offline. So I hope that made sense. Um, so in essence, what we've done is we've created a messenger that will allow the view models to talk to each other. So if you had some state that one view model needed to know about from uh, your first view model, uh, in this case, it was the settings window had some state that the main window view model needed to know about. A messenger is a great way to do that. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.